Hello and welcome into episode 73 of the Stomp the Bus Show. I am your host, Mark Harris, joined by Colton Dodgson and another one of our uh, college dorm mates, for lack of a better phrase, uh, ASU men's hockey radio play-by-play voice, Tyler Paley. Tyler, how's it going, man? Good to see you guys. Thanks for having me on. It's been uh, too long, but uh, excited to, to hop on the show and talk some hockey with you guys. Uh, you know, I think it's taking you guys a little too long to get me on. The season's winding down here, but I know we have a lot to talk about. So. Mark's, Mark's brutal with the scheduling. Um, I was also just thinking there was there's a ton of star power to have come out of um, come out of that dorm, Mark. Uh, and I take a lot of pride in being the least successful one so uh that means that's a great that means a great deal to me hey i think the least successful one is probably the guy who got kicked out like three days into freshman year for punching the wall or whatever that was at least i beat that guy oh man that was brutal i don't even remember his name but I hope he's doing well i don't either i just remember yeah. that happened and yeah <laughs> glad but, yeah to tyler cleared, glad to have cleared that yeah <laughs> the low bar we've done that <laughs> Uh, I mean, the fact that we're all like employed is a, I, I don't think everyone on that floor can say that right now. And so, uh, good times good back in our place. Good um, for us. yeah, well, Tyler, I guess you could say that we pucked up by not, uh, having you on sooner. That was for me, guys. I'll see you later. Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> done. All right, Mark, you get one of those. Uh, I had to use it at one point. I was like, you know what? I have to I have to work. You this burned it. it a minute in, man. Yeah, well, that's how I roll, buddy. Um, anyway, <laughs> focusing actually on the ice and not uh, shenanigans from 10 years ago at Taylor Place. Uh, 23 wins. Most ever in a season for ASU hockey. Um, they've kind of been just cruising for the most part throughout the year. What's been the thing that's uh, kind of stood out to you about this season uh, for this team? Yeah, yeah, a, a lot of different things. And I think, you know, this season has kind of had its, you know, bumps, but but there really haven't been too many of them. Um, you know, at the beginning of the season, I think it was the firepower um, kind of coming in with a whole bunch of new faces, right? You had some key returners. Um, you had the Jackson brothers who have been fantastic and, and were fantastic up until that injury in December up in uh, in Colorado Springs. Um, it was great to see Ty come back, you know, for the, the latter portion of this season. But I think the, the, the big question mark at the beginning of the year was what do um, those who come in from the transfer portal, you know, the, the select few freshmen who got to see ice time toward the beginning of the season, what would all of that look like, both on an individual level and, and on a team level? And I think, you know, those questions were answered pretty early on. I mean, you saw contributors like the captain, Tyler Gratton, from, from you know, the first series against Merrimack all the way up until the, the you know, the series we're headed into, um, you know, up in Anchorage. Um, guys like Brian Chambers jumping right in and becoming one of the best centermen uh, in the country in terms of face-off, in terms of face-off win percentage, I should say. Um, you had other guys on, on the back end. Brandon Tabakin made an immediate impact as a grad transfer from Yale, um, kind of having that hockey IQ as well as the skill on the ice. And then you had the returners, right? I mentioned the Jackson brothers. Um, you know, you, you look at guys like Ryan Alexander, who perhaps had a bit of an off year this season, but... Um, but still found ways to contribute. Um, you know, uh, Tim Lovell was fantastic. Matthew Copperud returned to his kind of uh, form, you know, from, from the first few years uh, when he is just a scoring machine. I mean, you just can't get, yep. give that guy the puck. He's just going to, you know, net it just about every time, especially on the power play. So I guess that's my long way of saying it turned from a lot of questions at the beginning of the year to, hey, this team is legit. Not only does it have the skill, but it has the the desire to go be great and make something happen that, you know, hasn't been done before. And, and they just reached that goal last weekend. Right, right. And yeah, with uh, one more series to go. Um, with the In terms of the NCAA tournament, I kind of want to uh, talk this out. They're at 20th in the USCHO.com poll, and there's 16 teams that get into the tournament, correct? Yes. Yeah. It's based on the pairwise rankings, so not the poll, but they're also at 20th in the uh, – Oh, okay. So. Um, and so is that basically just kind of because they're playing a lot of 
uh, lower tier competition throughout the season and they just kind of have a very slim margin for error. And so is that kind of impacted at the ranking? That's essentially what we get to look back on and, and draw that conclusion. So what you just said is correct. However, when you look at the beginning of the season, you know, our first series was against then number 15 Merrimack, right? And then we went and played, uh, I, I believe they were then number 21 or 22 Northern Michigan. And we beat them. Uh, we swept both those series. Um, and so at the beginning of the season, it's looking like, all right, this team, Arizona State, did not enter the year ranked or, or really a legitimate contender in terms of national media. But but you, you take those two series and then, you know, people start to pay attention to you. The issue is that as the seasons have gone on, teams like Merrimack and Northern Michigan and even Harvard, which is perpetually year after year, a top 10, a top 15 team, they just have not had fantastic seasons. And you can't predict that. You know, we were talking with Coach Powers yesterday in our uh, biweekly Health Frozen Over show, and he put it in perspective for us, like, look, the schedules are built two, three years in advance, right? And you do your best to kind of predict where these teams will end up. And then, you know, you schedule accordingly because you need to have as an independent team, a pretty tough strength of schedule and then go and win those hockey games in regulation. But two, three years out, you don't know that Mary Mack is going to have an off year. You don't know that, that Ted Donato and Harvard are rebuilding in 23, 24. Um, those are, those are things to just kind of happen, Right. So, yes, you, you have like the, the perpetual blue bloods like, um, you know, Denver on your schedule and Providence um, and Cornell. And, you know, those were those were a couple of big wins and ties, you know, in, in regards to, to Cornell. But unless you I mean, you probably would have had to muster up. They still have the ability to do 25 wins. But to make the tournament, you probably have to be at 28 of 38 games, which is just wild to me. Um, just because of the the strength of schedule, but there's no way to predict that. Hindsight is 2020, but at the beginning of the year, you just don't know that Merrimack and Northern Michigan Michigan are going to have tough seasons. So looking ahead to next year, because a lot of the talk has been about you know ASU is at a disadvantage because they they weren't in a conference this season. How does this conversation sort of sort of shift going into next season? Being in a conference, what does that margin for error look like? We talked about reaching historical win totals, even to have a chance to get into the tournament. How, given this experience, how suited are they to now join a conference and be in a better position next season? Yeah, I mean, there's there's always a chance now because if you think about it, you know, um, the there are going to be at least you know there are eight NCHC teams right now and at least five of them are probably going to make the NCAA tournament when you think about it. So uh, p- potentially even six, because that's how good the conference is, you know, uh, Minnesota Duluth, a perpetual powerhouse and, uh, and the university of Miami are, are probably the teams that are on the outside looking in unless they can do something in the NCHC tournament. But where it's advantage Arizona state is there is a chance until the bitter end, because you are automatically in to the NCHC tournament at the end of the season. And then an automatic bid goes to the winner of that tournament. So even if, if Arizona State comes in seventh, eighth, ninth place in the conference in the regular season, yeah, that's not the goal, obviously. I mean, you're facing staunch competition, but then you enter the NCHC tournament and you have the ability to go on a run, right? Just like, you know, in the Pac-12 tournament in basketball or whatever the case may be, even that 12 seed still has a chance up until the very end. We see it with Arizona State basketball right now, right? Kind of an up and down season. They'll probably, or they, they will enter the Pac-12 tournament toward the bottom range of the 12. But if they are able to muster up a run, find some consistency, and then win the tournament, you know, there's, they're, they can go and make the NCAA tournament. It's the same concept in hockey. So the, the guys will always be fighting for something. And, and that's what's tough about keeping the guys, you know, motivated up until the end right now is, you know, you reach a point. And our point was probably, I would say, before the, the road trip to, to Alaska Fairbanks. But it, it kind of was the nail in the coffin on that Friday when we lost – up in Fairbanks, um, at that point, it becomes tough to keep your, your team motivated and kind of rally the troops because, you know, yes, there are still uh, season and, and program records and milestones you're going for. But at the same time, the guys, they have a good pulse on things. They understand, like, you know, 
we, our chances are, are one in 20,000. And that's not an exaggeration. That's literally Arizona State's chances right now. So it, it's not zero, but we can all be reasonable human beings and understand that, that it's zero, that they're not making the tournament, right? So you're, Next, so you're saying there's a chance. There, there's always it's not zero right <laughs> i want to know because the computer runs all the simulations i want to know what that scenario is that one in twenty thousand that that sends asu to the tournament like what has to happen for that to happen but i guess we'll never know or maybe we will yeah. Who knows? iron man needs to snap his fingers that's what needs to happen <laughs> Um, but I was just actually, you kind of answered my next question, but I was wondering if you could shed a little more light, cause you have a unique perspective seeing what has been the most successful hockey team, obviously in a very short history at, at ASU, there was some, obviously some club success and everything like that, but what has the sort of mood been around the team you said they kind of hit that that wall friday in, on the friday game against fairbanks but how has that energy sort of been throughout the season and and how has that all sort of progressed as they were you know continuing to win these games it has been um the best season i've been involved in and and that that is from the top down i mean the the vibe and the mood in the coaches' lounge, the vibe and the mood in the the locker room, not only before games, but just during a random Tuesday practice or or whatever the case may be, they've just been so positive. These guys have meshed better than any team that I've seen. And, and granted, I mean, you guys know you you were there, uh, you know, when we were back in school in 2015 when the team was first starting out, following the team and. You know, those were good teams with good individual players and, and they had their runs. And in 2018, 19, made the, made the tournament in 1920, uh, should have made the tournament had the, uh, the the season not been, you know, canceled due to COVID. Um, and, and those teams had skill and they deserve a lot of credit for what they were able to put together. But as far as a connected team, truly a team, and I know it's cliche, you know, we talk about this a lot in sports, but I have not seen a Sun Devil hockey team as connected as this one. And look, Coach Power says it all the time, both publicly and privately, winning cures a lot. And there are a lot of things that this team um, struggled with at one point or another, you know, throughout the season. And there are things that they're going to need to work on in the off season uh, to get better at and improve in certain categories. But that's, that's every team and that's every season, right? You look at ways to improve. But overall, the connectedness of this group of men has been something that I haven't seen before. And, uh, and it's, it's yielded incredible results. I mean, 23 wins in 36 games so far is like, I, I think that flies under the radar as to how hard that is, right? Like Alex, my, my broadcast partner, Alex and I were talking and um, the fact that we've only done seven losing post game shows where we've had to, you know, kind of sit there and, and say, oh, you know, what went wrong? And hindsight, of course, is 2020, and you look at ways that, you know, uh, well, if this happened or, oh, you know, maybe they hadn't taken this penalty or whatever the case may be. It's easy to look at, you know, in the rearview mirror. But seven losses, seven true losses, that that's so good. And, and it's just been fun to be a part of. Yeah, and you mentioned earlier about them going to the NCHC, which I've I've heard it described as, like, the SEC of college hockey. Um and you mentioned the tournament, but what I think is another great thing is it's similar to ASU basketball going to the Big 12 uh, next year. Each loss isn't going to hurt you quite as much because the league is recognized uh, as just having such a high quality overall. And then also, I personally, I really like that there's some level of like regionality in it where it's like you're playing teams in Colorado um, and you're playing quote unquote like blue blood hockey programs, right? You have Minnesota Duluth, uh, North Dakota's in that league, correct, right? Like, that's going to be like, I've, I've never, you know, before ASU hockey, I, I would never be like, man, I can't wait to go to a North Dakota hockey game <laughs> in the winter. But then like, you look up their arena and it's like, yeah. oh, okay, like this is actually really cool. That it, Like, I, I could see even like being in the NCHC being a really big deal for this program. And even attracting in more and more casual fans as well. It's it's such a big deal. And I, I think you kind of hit the nail right on the head there because it, it, I would agree that it is like the SEC 
um, for college hockey because yeah, North Dakota and Denver and, you know, you, you date back. I mean, it's been a while since Colorado college has won a national championship, but they have a couple, um, you know, of trophies, uh, back in the, I believe it was the fifties and sixties. Then you look at teams like Minnesota Duluth who, who have been good, not that long ago. I mean, like, what was it, you know, four or five years ago, they brought home a national championship. Denver has, has is tied for the most national championships uh, ever in college hockey. Um, and then you go either even further east and you got teams like Western Michigan, which has been fantastic over the last several years. Um, you know, we, we, St. Cloud State as well. So we have the ability to play the best in the sport. And, and I know, again, I'll go back to another cliche, but it's true. Like to be the best, you have to beat the best. And every weekend, you know, aside from, from a handful of non-conference uh, series that we'll play moving forward, we are going to be playing the best of the best in college hockey. You know, even on an off year, I mentioned teams like Minnesota Duluth and Miami at the bottom of the NCHC this year, um, still really talented programs with top tier players. I mean, we we lost and tied Miami earlier this year. And, and I don't think that's a knock on us so much as it, it just goes to show the depth of this conference. And that's the, the proverbial worst team in the conference this year. So uh, we're never going to have a weekend where we can take it lightly. Um, we are going to have to go out there and, and, you know, put on a show every single weekend. And as for the fans, I think they're going to see some really top-notch college hockey, um, some, some powerhouse programs coming here to Tempe. We have the ability to go travel and see all these incredible barns uh, across the nation. And, yeah, I think it's all positive from here. And, you know, some people, I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of in tune with the college hockey world and seeing some people saying oh, Arizona State doesn't stand a chance in their first year in the NCHC. I would argue we just don't know yet. And, and I would argue also a lot of people aren't considering like the, the level of skill and talent that are going to be coming onto this roster next year uh, between recruits, between the transfer portal. Um, there, there is going to be a legitimate chance that ASU is a contender next year um, in year one in the NCAAs. Yeah. So obviously this is something I was kind of thinking of hearing you, you talk about this and, and knowing – um kind of your history with the program uh i was i was around with you way back when what's it been like to go from you know uh oceanside your head scratching the rafters calling games to now uh you're at mullet arena talking about a a, a hockey team that's going to be playing sort of the titans of, of college hockey what's it been like watching this team go from you know, where they were to where they're about to be. What's that experience been like for you? I mean, so much fun is, is the easy answer. But, you know, I, I was thinking about that actually uh, this weekend as I was prepping for our final uh, Health Frozen Over show yesterday. And the, you know, it, I feel like, I, I won't say we've arrived, right? Um, but, but we're there. Like, we're, we're on the precipice of, of something really special and to see this team having made i guess technically two tournaments up to this point having built this brand new barn that rivals i mean we've been to up several now um college hockey arenas across the country and this one rivals anybody i mean i would put it up there with with just about any team in the nation to see them now make the jump to a conference all within a decade. I mean, that is not a long time. It, it's just been surreal to watch and to see it develop. And I mean, you know, this Colton from our days, like I grew up playing hockey. I, I remember it vividly. That was, that was my sport growing up. Did it with, you know, both my brother and my sister, my dad was always the coach. And then to see Arizona State get a hockey team and, and a legitimate D1, you know, caliber program for me personally, this this has been a blast, and and to then get a call to, to become the first radio play by play broadcaster, I mean, I had to I had to pinch myself. Um, the 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 opportunity and just the ability to be there every single weekend, and I won't lie to you, I mean, this is a long season, right? Like this is a this is a six month commitment. Um, this is not my full time job. Like I have a full time forty hour a week job outside of this, and so. This is a whole lot of time that I have to put into it, but but never does it feel like a chore or never does it feel boring. This is something I look forward to, whether it's our radio shows or prepping for our pregame shows or the games themselves. Um, this 
to see all of this come to fruition and to see this as a legitimate program that is that is on the precipice that is so close to doing something incredibly special and we really thought that that this year might be that year and, and it's just not going to happen in terms of making the tournament but we're so close and i feel like we finally have the final piece of the puzzle ready to go game one next season um it, it's it's been the ride of my lifetime and, and i can't wait you know for october already that's yeah, awesome. and the thing that I've noticed just in the short time that Mullet Arena has been up and running, like it feels like every like every time I've gone, the energy has been great in there, and like it, the tickets are not cheap at all, you know, <laughs> and like it just, I think it's just so great that this ASU program is just really like being supported and. People are going and they're like getting their return on investment just in terms of like their time going to the arena. Like, can you talk about like just how just beyond like actually what's going on in the ice, just how like the ASU community, uh, the ASU hockey community is like kind of just really helped this program just shoot up in popularity. Isn't it easier when you go and you play a hockey game and, and you have all the motivating factors in the world? outside of it. and then you add in 5,000 fans screaming as loud as they can wearing maroon and gold and cheering you on isn't it easier to go play week in and week out in front of that type of environment and to see how this sport has been embraced and grown in the valley and and, and I know you know so many people um, have a lot of different opinions whether whether it's about the coyotes or about hockey in general out here in Arizona and I would say to any of the doubters at this point, I invite you to come out to Mullet Arena for an Arizona State game. I mean, you you said it, Mark. Like, the environment in there, I don't think there's been one game this season that, that Alex and I haven't talked about the fans and that atmosphere within the Mullet because there there isn't an empty seat in the house. The student section has sold out every single game at Mullet in the last two seasons. And by the way, like a lot of these home games are against Augustana and Lindenwood, yeah. you know, not Long Island University, not exactly, you know, name brand teams in any, you know, sport, you know, so like. And based on the, the schedule, a lot of games fall on either whether it's, you know, winter break or, or sometimes fall and spring breaks. And yet they are continuing to show up, right? And and it's just, it's been nothing short of impressive. I mean, I wish that as a student, I could have had that experience. And, and to now get to experience that um, is is unbelievable because you you feel like you're a part of a community and you, you have a rooting interest in something. And, you know, I, I love ASU athletics. I know you guys do too. I know that's why you have this show. Um, but I just think hockey has entered kind of a different world, you know, and, and look, I, I don't think it's, it's, um, it kind of flies under the radar, the fact that hockey's a revenue sport. I mean, ASU doesn't have that many revenue sports, right? Obviously football, obviously uh, men's and women's basketball, baseball kind of teeters there, right? And, yeah, like, and, I don't even know what baseball technically is. Like, yeah, it exactly. just kind of depends, yeah. But hockey is. Hockey makes money for this athletic department and, th and this university. And I think that's a really important aspect because, you know, there, there are some who think, like, when you add a sport like hockey, you know, it's detrimental to programs like football and, and basketball because you're not, you know, building them up. I would argue the exact opposite. I think hockey has helped build those sports and the other sports that are equally as important but don't make money for the school. Um, and, and, you know, like Ray Anderson always used to say, like, athletics is the front porch to, to the university, right? And, and he was right in that regard, and, and he is right. Arizona State hockey has the ability to, to do so much for not only the athletic department, but the university. And that starts with the fans, and they have been unbelievable for two seasons now plus over at Oceanside but now they really kind of get to uh, to reap what they sowed and and uh, and enjoy you know a true atmosphere becoming of a division one program maybe stretch out a little bit too right not sitting on bleachers anymore <laughs> yeah exactly that they, they kept saying 700 people fit in Oceanside I will never believe that number man never I, yeah I remember that estimate <laughs> and it never seemed 
I, I feel like the most I saw was like 300 people. <laughs> like maybe if you include the, the snack bar over there in the corner. I just, yeah, I yeah. Know. Oh, man, what a place. It's been – it's bulldozed now, right? Yeah, no longer there. I know. Oh, I don't know it's on in our hearts. One of, the, one of the seats or something from, from like the locker room just as – memorabilia i don't think my wife would have liked you that you should have man they, they should have put that in the mullet yeah right what you really got to bring is that one pipe on the uh in the press box oh, that everyone would hit when you walk up Everybody. it has my blood on it somewhere <laughs> oh my god yeah, didn't they have to wrap like some padding around that at one point yeah. i feel like okay yeah i feel like it I was like that always... oh man what a place uh, it should have been recognized as a historical location, but that's just me. Well, Tyler, so, as you describe the energy in Mold Arena, the thing that um, – there's just more scoring in college hockey than an NHL game. Um, it's kind of the same way in, like, college – like, the goalies just aren't going to be quite as good, and it's the same, like, kind of with college baseball. There's more scoring just because the pitchers aren't quite as good. Like, that has to help uh, the environment too, right? Totally. I mean, you know, we've seen a lot of a lot of goals and I would argue a lot of big goals as well. Right. And I, I think that's a that's a key point because, you know, Arizona State hockey fans are very smart fans. Like and that's something we've picked up on. Um, and it's not something I ever doubted so much as as just it became clearer as time went on. Like they understand the game and they understand like what's at stake and you know certain certain uh traditions within the sport and so when they see a goal score or a big goal or a clutch you know performance or whatever the case they react accordingly and i think that's been awesome to see as well because you know it's it's just i mean it kind of just appeared on campus one day right this sport and then mullet appeared and then you know the the environment obviously um got a lot better and and increased but the fans really do understand kind of what's at stake game in and game out. And, you know, they, they have embraced this team wholeheartedly. And um, yeah, I think, you know, it's, it's always fun to see a lot of goals in a game. I mean, it's always fun to see a shootout, I would argue too, but high scoring games are fun to call from my perspective. That's for sure. Now, did you make the trip to Alaska? I think it was the first trip to. Fairbanks. Yeah. Fairbanks in February. Oh man, are yeah. you making the next Alaska trip too? Are you going to Anchorage? Leave tomorrow. Leave Thursday. Wow. Yeah. So they, uh, the it's been it's been great. We've we've been told that we're traveling to uh, to every series this year, and then that's you know as as far as I've heard, that's the plan for next year as well. Um, you know, kind of hard to go back on that when when you know you do it for for one season. So very grateful to be able to travel. Um, you know, it's. It's uh, it's a big time commitment, but it's so worth it just to, you know, to be able to share the stories of the team, the players, the coaches um, all throughout the season. You know, like home broadcasts are great and I love being at Mullet and there's no place like it. And, you know, if you ask any arena to call a game from, I'll, I'll tell you Mullet 100 times out of 100. But to be able to go see these other barns and see these atmospheres and meet the fans and the players and the staff and the coaches like there is something uh, about that that you just you won't get by not traveling. And um, and and so, yes, we will be going to Anchorage, um, excited for that trip and then excited to see all these brand new uh, NCHC arenas come next year. So what is what is oh, Fairbanks ahead, like in February? <laughs> Listen, very nice people. I don't want to, like, sit here and, and trash Fairbanks. It's not a place I would ever live. Um, I, I don't really quite understand. I'll tell you a quick anecdote. There was this gentleman, super nice. Uh, Alex and I were walking around. Just We had some time to kill, and we were walking around to grab a coffee or something. And uh, this gentleman made a comment like, oh, down in America, you guys do X, Y, and Z. And, and I stopped listening because I was like, man, am I about to break the news to this guy that we are – in the United States of America right now, but, uh, but, but I, you know, I, obviously I think he said it, you know, jokingly, but, um, it, it's, it's a quaint little town, a lot of snow, not sure it ever melts. We unfortunately didn't get to see the Northern lights. It was a little too cloudy and, and foggy out. Uh, you don't get to see it like in the city center, but you know, it was, it was a nice town. It's just not somewhere, you know, I've checked it off my list. Let's put it that way. 
<laughs> there you go. That's always good. I know I know a lot of people throw Fairbanks on that list of places to see. So um enviable spot for you. What about Anchorage? Are you looking forward to that? Very much so. Yeah. That because that Anchorage is like a legitimate, you know, metropolitan yeah. city. Yeah. Uh, and and you know, i just based on the photos and videos I've seen, it looks beautiful. Coach Powers has been telling us like the, the hotel is the best one we stay in all year. The, uh, you know, the, the city itself is really cool. The food is unbelievable. Uh, definitely going to try some seafood out there. So, yeah, really excited for Anchorage. Um, that's been a place I've wanted to go for a while. So just funny how now I get to go to Alaska two times in three weeks. But, hey, that's just yeah, that's that's how it's been crazy. Man. Brutal yeah. scheduling. How's, how's that flight? Six hours there. Oh, so, that's uh, be- as bad as I thought. Are you gonna? Yeah, you're, you're, gonna, well, you're gonna have the neck pillow, right? Yeah, well, of course, want the <laughs> neck pillow, but but luckily, direct flight from Phoenix. I mean, you can't beat that. So, oh yeah, with a neck pillow too. That's the that's the Paley special. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> are you guys going to Alaska next year, or is that kind of the end now that you guys are in a conference? Yeah, so so they they aren't on the schedule next year. Um, you know, I'm sure that we will play both uh, Anchorage and Fairbanks at some point in the future. You know, they're they're really important programs for for college hockey in general. And you know, I know Coach Powers um, has all the respect in the world for both you know Coach Largen and and Coach Shazby up there. And you know, they they're in kind of a tough position, right? Because they're independent programs too, and they kind of have to figure out their own schedules and. Um, and, and figure out who's willing to go up there and kind of trade a trip with them. So I don't think it's the last time we'll ever we'll ever play them. Um, I do think you know for at least the next season we won't see them, um, but but not a relationship that's done forever. Yeah, I mean, and there's not even like is is ASU the closest school to them, or is it like Denver or like because there's no yeah. nowhere in the Northwest, right? Like so, yeah. I, I guess that yeah, it's like one of those schools. I mean. You know, like we, they're just far from everybody, you know, and and when you think about where the other independents are, I mean, Long Island, right, completely other side of what feels like the world at that point. Um, you know, you what got the Linden, across the world. <laughs> right. I mean, you got Lindenwood in Missouri. You got, you know, uh, Anchorage and Fairbanks play each other quite a bit um, in the in the Governor's Cup, but um, you know, you got Stonehill out in Massachusetts. So, like, you're not particularly close to anybody. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Colton, you have anything to ask as we wrap this up? Not really, man. It's been an awesome conversation. Uh, learned a lot. You know, I, uh, I, I always want to come in and pick something up. I've always been that kind of guy. So I <laughs> appreciated the talk, man. I, I appreciate you guys having me on. This has been, uh, this has been really fun and always down to, you know, hop on with you guys and, you know, next season, come on out. I mean, I know you'll be there, but uh, but but let me know. We'll have you up to the box, and maybe you guys can hop on an intermission report or something with us. <laughs> Dude, that'd be sweet. I'm down. I, I, I hope the uh, I, I hope the uh, listeners can tolerate our very surface level hockey knowledge. <laughs> Listen, they they will embrace one and all. If they've embraced me, they will most certainly embrace you guys. So <laughs> there you go. Well, I, okay, yeah, one I'm more cool. question oh, go um, ahead, man. to round this out. If let's say you, we have a few just super casual ASU fans listening who haven't really paid that much attention to the men's hockey program, what would be uh, the one thing that you would say to them? Not not even like convincing them to come, just kind of a general kind of state of the program for them, I guess. This is a winning program. This is one of the best teams. Just forget about college professionals excuse me, high school, this is one of the best teams in the Valley. I mean, when you look at their record and when you look at um, um, the, the success that they've had this season, this is one of the best sports teams in the Valley. The return on investment that you get for purchasing a, a $30, $40 ticket, um, you'll get that in one singular game. You're going to have the time of your life for two and a half hours coming out to Mullet, having some great food, some drinks, some fun with a lot of fans who really love this team. Um, and and, and you you're going to want to root for them, right? They, that's the persona that this team adopts. They're hard, they're heavy, and they they make you a believer in what this team is ultimately striving for. And that's that's an NCAA championship. And they're they're so close. 
and every last fan who comes out and supports is doing something to help this team. And, uh, and, and the sky's the limit. I mean, I know that's a cliche again, but like the sky's the limit for this team. And we invite anybody and everybody to hop on board because uh, this, this team is going places and not that long from now, may I add. Did you, uh, did you Google sports cliches before the store or before the, the show? Or is it just yeah, off, right? keeping track. It's too many, but yeah. Well, this is, I, this I, I to off the phone, right? Yeah, I know. I know this. Hey, listen, this team's not a cliche. This team is unique, but, uh, but, but they fit a lot of the, you know, those, those typical sports, uh, sports, passionate, uh, uh, motivational quotes, if you will. <laughs> No, I get it, man. Hey, it, it works. It works out. I'm just like, this is this is impressive stuff. He's just pulling these out left like, and right. If you guys have longer, I can just keep rattling them off, I'm sure. First one's in, last one's out, <laughs> as they That's say. That's right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> All right. Well, Tyler, thank you so much for coming on, man. This was great just to get a kind of general update on the program and I'm I'm just so excited for them next year. I mean, that, that's what I'm really looking forward to. So Great having you on. Um, and yeah, thank you for listening, everyone. Uh, please like and subscribe on YouTube. Rate and review on your podcast platform of choice. And as always, go Devils. Goodbye. Go